in a uh, what is a big game. Now, due to the length of our live Ryder Cup coverage, uh, our pregame show kind of got uh, covered up by the golf. We will have more on Ron Lancaster from Brian Williams. He'll have a great look back on the life and times of a true football legend. But I wanted to start with you guys. Uh, he passed away yesterday at the age of 69, uh, but a month after it was announced that he was battling uh, lung cancer, and this caught to everybody uh, off guard. We watched him growing up. We came to know him as a broadcaster and a coach. You're thoughts tonight, Chelsea? Well, for me, David, Ron Lancaster was one of my childhood heroes, one of those influences that creates that desire, that ambition, that love for football, CFL football. It was in the 70s that I really started following the league. And out east, it was Hamilton and Toronto. One week, I go to one stadium. The next week, the other stadium. Out west, it was the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And it was Ron Lancaster, George Reed, and Ron Lancaster throwing those touchdowns. I really admired him as a player. I was envious of him as a broadcaster, and I have tremendous respect for him as a pro football coach. I have known Ron Lancaster. He's been a part of my life, my whole life, and he will be in my memory for the rest of my life, guys. Schultz, the, um, 30 seconds is not right for me to t express my feelings about Ron Lancaster to the Lancasters and the rest of the country, but I can say this. You need leaders, uh, to, and, and Ronnie was a leader of leaders, and he taught people how to lead, and he did this so effortlessly. And uh, I think, guys, if, if more people could be, more players, more coaches, more executives, more broadcasters, more people could be more like Ronnie, Canada, and this world would be a better place because he simply was so genuine, and that's what I want to say to the Lancasters. You have a genuine hero in your household, and we loved him, and I know you're mourning dearly, and, and my, my heart goes out to you. Yeah, this is this is a tough time for for all of us who watched him play, and and you know, for me, I don't think enough gets said about him as a broadcaster. He's the the best color commentator the league has known uh, until Glenn Suter came along. He was in a class by himself. Uh, he just had such insight into the game. As a coach, obviously, uh, I played against him for so many years, and and my most significant memory when it comes to Ron Lancaster, his decision in '99. I'd never been to a Grey Cup. We were minutes from going to a Grey Cup, and on third and inches, he calls this play uh, where he decides to. <laughs> <laughs> to let Dan McManus throw to uh, to Hagen, who was a linebacker, zero catches in the CFL, and he decides to let him air it out. If they do not make that play, we go to the Grey Cup. Uh, just the courage and, yeah. and to, to, to call that play, that uh, exemplified what Ron Lancaster is all about. There's so many great stories about Ron Lancaster on and off the field. That one, too, Danny McManus tells it real well. You know, it was down to the, the, the game was on the line, and he, and he looked for the play, and Lancaster gave him the play, and he looked back, and he said, Give me that play again, one more time. And he went to the huddle and said, uh, okay, boys, here it is. And there are so many memories about this man as he uh, came up from Pennsylvania and made Canada his home and became a CFL legend. They are honoring him with a video tribute at the stadium where he was the coach, where he led the Tiger Cats to a great cup in 1999 after that win in that East final that Jock talked about. Four-time Grey Cup champ, twice as a player, twice as a head coach two-time most outstanding player and now we take you live to Ivor Wynn Stadium for a moment of silence. Please remain standing for our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, the Burford District Elementary School Choir. to eight for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Ticats had a lead to start the second quarter, but 12 straight points by Winnipeg. They're trying to make it back-to-back -back wins. Dave, Jock, Matt, and Chris. The boys are going to tell you what they thought of the first half momentarily, but uh, first, this is Hall of Fame weekend in the Canadian Football League. Ron Lancaster was inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in 1982, and he was a shoe-in for that. You've no doubt heard the news by now. Ron Lancaster passed away yesterday at the age of 69. There are some very heavy hearts at that stadium that we're watching tonight in Hamilton, and there will no doubt be many more, thousands more, in Regina tomorrow night when the Riders, the team that he was synonymous with, host the BC Lions. He is and was a true CFL legend. Brian Williams now on the man that was known as the Little General. 
Uh, just very sad day for the CFL and Canada and especially Saskatchewan where he was just simply a legend. You know, a good man went down and uh, he meant a lot to me uh, as a friend and as a foe and as a teammate. It's time to celebrate his life now. Ron Lancaster's career as a player began in Ottawa in 1960. After three seasons, he was traded to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and a legend was born. He was a great leader, and the huddle was his, was his domain, and it was nobody else's, and he wanted everybody to know that. And uh, I think that uh, because of it, I think everybody just, just fed off it and, and really uh, just, just got on the bandwagon and away we went. Short in stature, but long in arm strength, Lancaster earned the name the Little General and in 1966 led Saskatchewan to its first ever Grey Cup championship. Having grown up here my whole life, I mean, he's kind of an institution that they started here with this. I think uh, when those guys played like Lancaster and Reed, and those, those are the days that really built the uh, foundation of this, this, uh, this program. I mean, and the fans and the, and the following, and it's starting to be revived in my era, and, and uh, we definitely feel uh, the great, tremendous loss. The thing about Ronnie and the thing about George is that they were superstars in this realm yet they were your neighbor, they were your friend. You'd run into them at the grocery store, the curling club, the gym. When you talk about Ron Lancaster, as much as you talk about the numbers and the victories and the comebacks, you talk about a regular guy. And the contrast between his fame and, and the way he carried himself is what really has endeared him to people. Ron Lancaster embodied all the things that are great about Saskatchewan. Uh, he, his heart, he had a great competitive fire in him, obviously. He is going to be remembered forever in this province and very fondly, and he'll be missed. After earning two most outstanding player awards and breaking numerous records, Lancaster retired at the age of 40 and was a fearless competitor right to the end. When I first came in the league in 77, he was still playing quarterback for Saskatchewan. And I remember when uh, I, I put the blitz uh, package in in Edmonton uh, when we started a lot of our zero blitz package and, and I'd yell at him on the field. I'd say, what coming after you, Lancaster? He said, send them all. That's, that was his attitude. After two lackluster seasons as Saskatchewan's head coach, Lancaster became a successful broadcaster before returning to the coaching ranks in 1991 with the Edmonton Eskimos. Lancaster would go on to win Grey Cups with Edmonton in 93 and the Hamilton Ticats in 1999. I learned tremendous loyalty from Ron Lancaster. He offered me a contract the day after the 2002 season for me to play in 2003. And after I had told him I was gonna retire and stay home, he told me, he goes, he says, listen, the contract stands. If you change your mind in a month or two months, you come in here and come to training camp or come to the season whenever you want and you can play for us. Just let me know. And you know, he did that because I had played well for him. Lancaster's unpredictable and gutsy approach as a player weren't lost in his coaching style. Uh, 1999, and we're playing the uh, Eastern Final in Montreal, and that's third in inches, and they got to actually go in and score because there's a couple of minutes left. They play action pass into the line of scrimmage. With inches to go, they elect to throw the football. What a gamble by Ron Lancaster. And I'm sitting upstairs in the booth, and I'm wondering how many other head coaches would have been able to make that call when the safe call would have been just a quarterback sneak it and keep the drive alive. For those who knew him best, Lancaster's fun-loving personality, sense of humor, and devotion to team camaraderie are crucial to his legacy. I know to Danny and, and myself, he, he, was a, he was a fatherly figure, and he was someone that um, we could go to with anything. So certainly we feel like we've lost a, a very close friend, but also a member of our family. I was privileged to to play against Ronnie and also uh, play for Ronnie. And um, I had very fond memories. Some great, great images that uh, we will never forget. We all, just like you, grew up watching this guy and on TV, on the field, and then as a coach and an executive. And uh, our condolences, as we've said earlier tonight, go out to the Lancaster family. Uh, he will never, ever be forgotten. Uh, by the way, Brian uh, Williams also did an interview with his son, Ron Lancaster Jr., and that can be seen right now on tsn.ca. We'll be right back. The boy